When you think of the perfect Warframe, what do they have? Movement? Grouping? Invulnerability? Energy generation? AoE nuking? Reload speed, fire rate, and casting speed? Well, lucky for you, Gauss has got all of that and more, now bundled up in his beautiful Prime Warframe. Gauss is a very low skill floor in that all of his abilities can be used with absolutely no thought put towards them and you'll have a fantastic frame. But where his power truly lies is both the deeper intricacies within his abilities and the synergies they have between themselves. In order to keep this as simple yet informative as possible, I'm going to cover all the abilities by themselves within their respective sections and after that discuss all the synergies they have together. If you're already a Gauss professional though, trust me, there is stuff for you in this video, timestamps are down below for the build, which I promise you, you're going to want to see. Getting right on into it, his passive or kinetic battery augments each of his abilities in their own unique way, in which I will detail when I get to them. Alone though, charging the battery can be done just by moving, increasing it by 0.5% per meter traveled. Furthermore, Gauss also passively gains increased shield regeneration rate and decreased shield regen delay for every point stored in his battery, capping out at 120% for the former and 80% for the latter at maximum battery. Without his fourth, Redline active though, do remember, you only have access to 80% of your battery. Your abilities will still scale off of it at any level, but that last 20% and Redline's buffs are really, really strong. Mach Rush is about as iconic as an ability can get in Warframe. Tap casting will have Gauss dash forward 12 meters, while holding down the ability key will have him sprint forward continuously, moving at a speed of 25 meters per second. While either dashing or rushing, enemies within 4 meters of you will be knocked down and contribute 1% to your battery charge, while sprinting at a hard surface will create a 10 meter explosion that will deal impact damage and launch all nearby enemies away. Alone, that mechanic is quite worthless, but Mach Rush actually has an augment Mach Crash, creating a vortex on surface impact that will pull all enemies in, scaling quite well off of range. With Mach Rush's low energy cost and Crash working through walls, this is a very effective grouping method as an augment. Kinetic Plating has Gauss surround himself in a shield of kinetic energy, who could have guessed? This shield will protect you from all impact, puncture, slash, cold, heat, and blast damage and their accompanying status procs. Furthermore, it grants stagger and knockdown immunity, all at a 30 second base duration. While there is much more, on the defensive side, your current battery level will determine the amount of damage reduction you have against the previously listed elements. May I remind you that almost every enemy in the game, at least all the relevant ones, deal IPS damage, and the most dangerous of Eximus units deal either heat or blast, making Gauss about as immortal as Revenant or Zephyr. Truly the only thing that can kill him is toxin damage, but that goes for every frame besides Hildren and a few others, and even then, it isn't that difficult to avoid. To provide that DR though, kinetic plating will drain 1% of your battery per second and between 1 to 6.5% of it per hit received. To your benefit though, 5% of damage absorbed is converted into energy for gauss and melee attacks will restore 0.25% of your battery per contact with enemies. Moving on to admittedly one of the most complicated abilities in Warframe, we have Thermal Sunder. I'm going to do my best to keep this as simple as possible while retaining all the port information, because there's a lot. Thermal Sunder has two different casting types, both proccing all of their relevant effects within their initial 12 meter radius that over time will lower itself to 6 meters. Tapping will give you cold damage while holding will give you heat damage. Do note that you can swap these under the tap hold ability section in the settings. Speaking individually for now, casting the cold variant will charge your battery by 10% and inflict a cold proc on all enemies within the radius. Damage does scale off of battery level with 0% dealing 150 and 100% dealing 750 cold damage. Enemies within the field will also take damage per second which will diminish as its area does. Casting on enemies already afflicted by a cold proc from any source will also instantly freeze them. The heat counterpart functions quite similarly except this time damage is set to 300 at 0% and 1500 at 100%. Casting this will also drain 10% from your battery rather than charging it and force procs its relevant element as well. Enemies will again take damage per second while within this field but casting on enemies already under a heat proc will now have it deal its normal damage plus the damage of the current heat proc. Basically, the way heat procs work in tandem with how recasting essentially expedites all current heat procs onto one damage instance is quite strong, 
More on this later. With Redline active and over 80% battery, Cold Casting will instantly freeze enemies, Heat Casting has its damage doubled, allowing further casts to do double the prior's damage and so on, and the Blast proc from the combination of both elements will permanently strip enemy armor based off of your battery level, with a 100% battery equating to a full strip before damage is dealt, making a very unbuffed Thermal Sunder do that. There is still a lot to this ability that I can cover, but we're going to leave that for later, trust me, you're going to want to see it. For the star of the show, we have Redline. Redline, as commonly restated, gives access to your full battery past 80% to the full 100 for its base 30 second duration. During this, you will gain fire rate, melee attack speed, reload speed, and casting speed all at very high percentages. Interestingly, to scale the buffs provided, you build not for strength but rather duration. Battery wise, it also introduces more mechanics to Gauss's entire kit. While active, it will drain 2% battery per second, but hitting 100% will negate all drain from any source, allowing you to maintain it indefinitely for the rest of Redline's duration. This does have a slight negative though. The more duration you have on Gauss, the slower your Redline counter can build from 0 to 100, scaling inversely with duration. This can be expressed as 100% divided by your duration times one third, which means that the Redline counter cannot be maxed before a third of its duration has passed. Pause the video real quick, I have some more info for y'all that I need to share. This will be a bit less formal. People commonly refer to Gauss's max battery when Redline is not active as 80%, just under or hitting the red line. But you'll notice that activating it starts to counter at 0%, going up to 100. This is essentially a 100% meter for the final 20% of the battery. Trust, this will become much more important later. It's weird, I know. Who knows why it works like this. Alright. Back to the actual video. With the abilities alone mostly now fully covered, let's get into the synergies. Redline itself has a couple. I've already mentioned the Thermal Sunder buffs, but for Mock Rush, it will cut its energy cost clean in half, and Kinetic Plating will grant 100% more base melee damage and guarantee staggers on enemies hit. Thermal Sunder has a couple unique, albeit worthless, interactions with Mock Rush, granting either cold or heat to your Mock Rush knockdown and explosion based on if you run through the respective field before casting. And finally, Kinetic Plating will add 100% more slash damage to Mock Rush's explosion, also guaranteeing a slash proc on enemies caught within it. Personally, I think Gauss is the most well-designed kit in the entire game, alongside just being really good and an absolute blast to play. Abilities are covered now though, leaving what y'all are definitely waiting for, the builds. First is one that I have actually been teasing for quite a while on the channel, as it has become one of my favorite builds lately, and that is Wrathful Advanced Gauss. Melee Gauss is like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. With melee being arguably the fastest way to charge his battery efficiently, kinetic plating giving 100% more damage towards them, and Redline absolutely blowing their attack speed through the roof, adding in Wrathful Advanced to the mix is a no-brainer. Wrathful will give your melee flat critical chance, equal to your current power strength. By that, I mean if your strength is 243, you'll get 243 flat CC to your melee. This is by and large the best way to get permanent red crits on every melee, and what I have been using in so much footage lately, because it's just so satisfying. The build can vary pretty heavily though depending on a few factors. The first of those is your melee weapon of choice. I like using the Kana Prime with the build as shown, just because it's a strong and fun melee, but you can use literally anything. You'll notice the build is absent of Blood Rush or Sacrificial, and that is due to Wrathful Advance, but you still need to do some amounts of math. For example, my Nikana Prime is a base 28% critical chance, which means that I would need to hit 272 strength on Gauss for permanent reds, but I am using Gladiator Might, whose passive effect grants another 110% of my CC to my melee just for being at 12x combo. The way to calculate values like this, or at least the way I do it, is your critical chance buffs being 110% of your weapon's base CC, being 28, plus your weapon's base CC, again, being 28. In that case, we get 58.8 as a final value for our Nikana, meaning we actually only need 242% CC to get permanent reds. Apply the formula shown previously, but obviously with your own numbers, to find what strength you need for your melee. You can go above that to get even higher crit tiers, but that is the baseline. So with that being said, for Nikana, I run both Blind Rage and Umbral Intensify for 243% power strength, just over the cusp for reds. Duration also varies slightly, depending on one main thing, grouping. Melee builds love grouping, and Gauss can make use of his augment to do that, 
but also requires pretty good range to actually make it worthwhile. In the case you do not have the upcoming method of grouping, run with this setup. This will give Mot Crash just under 20 meters of grouping alongside enough duration for your abilities to feel comfortable and Redline's buffs to be potent enough. The negative from Overextended is rebuilt from Walt Augmented, and this open mod slot can be used for more strength if your melee requires, or literally anything else. Gauss also has a free Exilus as he has Prime Surefooted built into his too. Strike can be swapped for anything else as well. Blind Rage's negative efficiency is also nothing to worry about, as remember, Kinetic generates more than enough energy here. Archon Stretch can be used with Diriga in the standard Manifold and Momentous Bond priming build for 12 separate statuses on Condition Overload for 960% or more base damage. Diriga can serve another purpose though, leading into my second and preferred variation of the Wrathful build. If you have Melee Vortex, equipping it on your Nikana can entirely replace Bot Crash and free up many more slots on the build. Vortex gives a 45% chance on kill of an enemy under Magnetic to drag in all enemies within 18 meters. This is essentially Nautilus's pull, but far more aggressive and consistent. With the need for range removed, we can instead build fully towards duration with Narrow Minded, giving us over 300%. This actually leaves two open slots, I am using Natural Talent, just because that initial redline cast can be quite long, but if you want to put shards on him, then really, you can use whatever here. Augmented, I just drop for Fury and run it with Strike. To actually get the required magnetic procs though, building it on our primer would dilute other more important statuses, so just make sure your Diriga's weapon has it equipped, and every tag it makes with its ability will prime enemies with magnetic, allowing you to get the melee vortex. To go the extra mile, run duplex bond to have clones of your Diriga running around, and priming even more enemies with it. Focus school wise, like many things, is open to you, Xenoric is just comfy for me. Gauss is easily my favorite frame right now, especially with this Expedite Sunder build, but the beauty of him is that he can be played in largely any way. No Helmet, still one of the best frames around, which is rare to say. Can we get more Gauss-like characters in the future DE? Please? Now for the giveaway information. Unfortunately, the bot we used in Discord broke, and I felt it would be unfair to try a few of the other methods we had of fixing it, as they wouldn't be as fair as just restarting it. So that is what I am going to do. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, join my discord, link down below in the pinned comment, head over to the key eye giveaway channel number 2 and click this button and you're all set. This will be active for 5 days and the winner will be revealed live on stream. They will have 48 hours to claim in which we will re-roll if they don't. Thank you for your patience everyone, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Only about 30% of you guys are actually subscribed so if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it gunning for that 100k in 2024. If you want to support me even more, the Patreon is linked in the description where you'll get a lot of my content a day early and, you know, just help me out a lot. A massive thank you to all of my supporters who help me keep the lights on in the house that I don't own nor pay the electrical bill for. I hope this video was informative and helpful, and I will see all of you guys very soon. Peace.